<gasps> what? Ah, that's not a real snake. Look at the bottom. Today, me and the boys, we're going to talk about snakes. Now, this is not a real snake, but if you were to see a real snake in your playground or garden or in the park, what would you do? Stand still. Yep. Go and tell, yeah. stop, freeze, walk away slowly, then you can run, go and tell a grown up, your mum, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, your uncle, your auntie, your cat, your dog, tell everybody to be careful. Let them know where the snake is so they know to be safe and leave it alone. And if you leave the snake alone, what's the snake gonna do? It'll just stand there and do nothing. It'll just lie there and do nothing and slither away. Is that right, Luca? Yep. Yeah. Remember, all snakes also play an important role in the environment. While it's always important to know what to do if you see a wild snake, today we'll be talking about non-venomous constricting snakes called pythons. Carpet pythons are the most diverse of all pythons in Australia. There are subspecies found in every state and territory. Here I have a Victorian carpet python and a jungle carpet python. There are also coastal carpet pythons, inland carpet pythons, Darwin carpet pythons. There are many subspecies of python here in Australia. We have more pythons in Australia than any other country in the world. This is Charles and he is a Darwin carpet python and a great example of how big carpet pythons can grow. They can get up to two and a half, even three metres long. So Jacques, who have you got there? Uh, Albie. And what sort of snake is Albie? He's an albino carpet python. And what does albino mean? It means he's white. Yep, he's really beautiful, isn't he? Yep. Pythons' varied colours and patterns help them to camouflage in their different environments. This is Victor, and he's a Victorian carpet python, one of only two species found here in Victoria. The only other species of python found in Victoria is the diamond python, and this is one I found when exploring the far northeastern parts of Victoria. And there's nothing more exciting for a wildlife enthusiast than to see an animal in its natural habitat. Due to the diamond python having a very limited range in Victoria, they are listed as a threatened species in this state. The Victorian carpet pythons are an endangered species here in Victoria. And sadly, what does that mean, boys, if you're an endangered species? It means there's not many in the wild. It means there's not many left in the wild. Sadly, their habitat has been reduced and they need hollows in old river red gums to nest in and lay their eggs. So, Luca, do pythons chew their food? No, they just pull their hole. Okay. And you shouldn't talk with your, with your mouth full, should you? <laughs> <laughs> pythons asphyxiate their prey. And what does that mean, boys? Oh, it means they're suffocating their prey. They squeeze their oh. food. <laughs> He's trying to grow on the trees. Yeah. Carpet pythons are great climbers and spend a lot of their time in trees. So how many muscles in a snake's tummy? 200, 220. Wow. And how many have you got in your tummy? Uh, two. Six. Six pack? Yeah, we have two six packs. 220 pack in a snake. Snakes have lots of muscles and more bones than any animal. You're right, Jacques, and they can have up to 400 bones in their spine. Carpet pythons are so well adapted to climbing. They use their prehensile tail to wrap around branches for security 
and they've got 220 stomach muscles to help them manoeuvre through the branches. Much better climbers than we are, with even all our arms and legs. Pythons don't have fangs, but they have sharp teeth. That's right, Luca, and pythons use their tongue to smell. Like all snakes, they have a forked tongue or bifurcated tongue, meaning the end is split in two and they can smell left and right. Their tongue flashes out, picking up particles in the air, helping them to locate their prey. Pythons also have heat sensing organs on their bottom jaw and around their nose called labial pits that help them hunt their warm blooded prey. However, there is an exception with pythons belonging to the genus Aspidites. Hey Luca, what's your favourite snake? Black headed python. Yeah, they're one of my favourites too. And why does he have a black head? Because he's a blackhead. Yes, he is. Another iconic Australian python is the blackheaded python. These stunning snakes have a black head to help them thermoregulate. They'll use the black head to stick into the sun out of a bush or out from a burrow in the, under the sand to help warm up their cold blood. They also predominantly eat reptiles. They'll eat other snakes and lizards. So they do not have obvious heat sensing organs on the side of their mouth, like other pythons do. These pythons are terrestrial, meaning they spend all their time slithering across the ground. They're also known as a primitive type of python due to the fact they burrow underground and come out predominantly at night to hunt. Like this one we found on the road when traveling through central Queensland on a wildlife spotting adventure. This is Nagini and he is an olive python, Liaces olivarchus. These pythons are one of the biggest pythons we get in Australia, if not the biggest snake. They grow up to four, maybe even six meters long and can eat a whole wallaby for breakfast. How are you going, boys? Good. Yeah, he's not too heavy? He's really heavy. He weighs about 20 kilos. How much do you weigh, Jar? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, not 20 kilos. I weigh. His muscles there. He's not very heavy for me. Not very heavy. See? Oh, hold it still. Look at the muscles in this python. He's got bigger muscles than me. <laughs> oh, Dad, yeah. look at the rainbow colors in his skin. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can see why there are those dream time stories about the rainbow serpent, a giant snake that carved the valleys and mountains and shapes for our country. Beautiful, uh, isn't it? You right, Luca? Uh, Dad, yeah. did you eat a human kid? <laughs> no. We'll say no. But a little one? Oh, He's no. Too heavy. Look at the rainbow colours on him, too. Yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, Luca! Who's on your head there, Luca? Uh, Tarzan. <laughs> what sort of snake is Tarzan? Uh, he's a common one. <laughs> That's Are you okay? Yeah. He just clicked in my hat. Okay, boys, let's go put the snakes away and then we'll give them a little treat. Time to feed the pythons. All right, you're doing well. Often get asked what do you feed your snakes well they are carnivores which means they eat other animals and in the wild they predominantly eat 
birds and mammals. Here at Wildlife Exposure, we feed them solely rats and mice and occasionally a rabbit. So we have freezers full of frozen rats. Ooh, there you go. Snake food. The boys are just having a little biscuit as a treat for helping me with the snakes this morning. But boys, do the snakes eat biscuits? No. No. What are we going to feed the snakes? Rats. But if it was a, if it was a, a rat biscuit, I would. A rat biscuit? Yeah. Good one, John. Now, also, you boys are chewing your biscuits, but Luca, does a snake chew its food? No, oh, it swallows it whole. They swallow it whole in one big gulp. Oh, so this snake here, for example, can eat something about eight times the size of its own head. That's a bit like you, Ja, eating a whole football. Yeah, Luca, could you fit a football in your mouth? Yep. Keep you quiet, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, so these rats are not alive. They've been frozen, we've defrosted them now. And they're carnivores. Yeah, snakes are carnivores, so they need to eat meat. And they'll eat the whole animal. They'll eat the fur, the bones, and they'll digest it all. While pythons don't have fangs, they do have hundreds of needle sharp teeth to help them catch and hold on to their prey. As snakes swallow their food, their jaws stretch apart and they use their teeth and muscles to work their food down their throat. And snakes shed their skin once a month or once every two months, depending on their rate of growth. They even have an ocular scale, a scale that covers their eye for protection. And when they shed, that also peels off. But what is the skin made out of? Um, your, your hair. The and skin. I'm your fingernails. Yeah, it's made out of the same stuff as your hair or fingernails called keratin. Reptiles are covered in keratin because it protects their body as they move along the ground from scratches, but it also can prevent them from being burnt in the sun as they sit out to warm up their cold blood. Snake's skin is not slimy or wet. In fact, it is dry. Boys, what are you wearing there? A scarf. scarf. What sort of scarf is that? It's a snake scarf. Does it feel comfortable? Yeah, I'm not really the physical one. Feels really warm. Yeah? Yeah, it does feel. Thanks for watching our Python Snake video. We hope you love snakes now as much as we do. Please remember to subscribe to this channel Follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you like what we do. Please leave any comments in relation to any of our videos. We'd love to hear your feedback. And as always, take care of yourselves out there and look out for others. You.